Hey everyone, today I want to discuss the trailer for Ridley Scott's Napoleon that dropped recently. I have already watched the trailer, but I, I want to re-watch with you guys. If you haven't watched it, please go ahead and watch the, the full, to have the full experience. I'm going to be stopping along the way and commenting over that and looking at a lot of references that I feel. One of them is directly that he used, that is Jerome's that you've seen in the thumbnail for, for this video. But I, I definitely want to look at other pop, pop culture references as well as historical painting. So let's jump right in and I'll stop making comments along the way. It's weird how nowadays we need a trailer for the trailer, but that, it is what it is, right? No doubt you've seen the chaos in the streets. I want to stop right here and make one of the first comment that is, this is 1793, as you saw, and a lot of the painting, uh, the painters from the academic era were really flourishing. So you have Jacques-Louis David, you have a lot of other paintings from the Ecole de Beaux-Arts in Paris. So it was a very uh, strong landscape for historical painters, uh, historical depiction, especially because of the salons uh, that were happening and a lot of the paintings were trying to stand out from uh, other people. So using different themes and that's what we're going to see later on as well. But it's interesting that doing a movie about this era, definitely Ridley Scott and the director of photography have a lot of historical painting references that they can use. A lot of them I won't know from the trailer alone. If you do, please uh, drop in the comments so we can share knowledge and understand more about the references and learn more from the movie. We must make an example or France will fall. What would you do if this assignment of defense was transferred to you? It's interesting that in the age of YouTube, we already have a lot of reacts from historians, so we can definitely learn from that as well. And I want to stop right here and jump into another pop culture uh, trailer, uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Unity. It dropped like nine years ago, so have that in mind while I, I go through some Thank shots. You. So it's really interesting to see already the kind of wash of blue and yellow that really Scott tends to use. So this is what I feel is a cross-reference. If you look at Gladiator, it was already influencing a lot of the cinematic uh, construction for historical era products. So there is a cross-reference there, but I think this brings back a lot of the feelings that I'm having watching this trailer for Napoleon. So I, I think, I feel we're gonna uh, feel a, a similar vibe from uh, both products in the final movie as well. Uh, if you jump ahead a, a little bit, the link's gonna be in the description so you can definitely reference back to this. But this kind of scenes uh, are definitely uh, what we're gonna feel uh, in, in, in the final, uh, the, the trailer for the movie as well. These battles with a lot of this yellow and, uh, and especially bird eyes view. Uh, we have a lot of that here as well. That so here, here's, here's the direct reference to that. Everyone. I love, just one quick uh, comment here, I love uh, interior, uh, interior scenes. They are using a lot of candle lights. The best reference I see for that is Barry Lyndon uh, by um, Kubrick. I'll have a link to the trailer as well here in the description. It's great to get some of the uh, screenshots from the movie and do studies because they used candle lighting for the whole uh, film. They even developed uh, a camera especially for capturing the kind of lighting situation. Everyone around so you can see a little bit of the candle lighting in there. A lot of blues and yellows, as I mentioned before. Like the French victory at Toulon. The naval scenes also have a lot of references from pop culture. Napoleon. We've definitely seen a lot of that in uh, video games such as World of Warcraft, 
uh, as well as Assassin's Creed. Uh, I think there is a game called uh, Skull and Bones by uh, Ubisoft as well. The course of my life just changed. Napoleon. Uh, this is the one I, I want to mention. So I'll, I'll just go back here. So this is the first uh, painting that is the direct reference. So if we jump to this one, we'll definitely see the relationship there. It's painted by Jean-Léon Jérôme. It was painted, I believe, in 1886 for the Salon. Uh, it was presented in the Salon that year. Uh, I'll add the Wikipedia link to, to the description as well. And it already changes a little bit what we feel because of the relationship with uh, Oedipus, at least that's like how I think it's pronounced, and uh, the Sphinx, the Riddles, and, and the all the, the mythical history behind it. So it, it's great to, to look at that. And even going back to the image, you start feeling a little different. It's not just the relationship with a ruin, but the overall uh, message uh, behind that. So if you look at this painting from 1808 from Ing, definitely a lot of relationship in there uh, as we go back here. This painting uh, is current, currently at the Hearst Castle. Uh, so a lot of my audience is from uh, the US. So definitely if you are from California, if you've been there, please uh, leave a comment. What were your impressions looking at this? Uh, up front, they also have another uh, painting by Jerome about Napoleon uh, in Cairo. So it's great to see both of them. If you have seen, please, uh, drop a comment so we can uh, look at that as well. But we already see the difference in uh, the wash. So going back here, we see the difference in the yellow, strong wash that we we see throughout the movie. I am destined for greatness. But those in power won't that see. shot, I, I want to just go back here a little bit and sorry for the back and forth. This also reminds me uh, of a sketch from Jerome as well, and we can see the, the strong wash. If we go here uh, to the Heritage uh, Museum, uh, Hermitage, sorry, Museum, uh, we can see the very strong wash. I do believe there's a little bit of an old varnish uh, on top of this, so it's not that yellow, but definitely has a lot to do with the feel of being there and like sand storms and very warm environment, very hostile environment in the traveling situations that they have in the end of the uh, 18th century. So uh, as I mentioned before, I think there is a little bit of a yellow wash from old varnish. If we look at another painting of the same uh, topic, but the finalized, this is the first sketch and then he came back to the topic and we can see that in here. We can definitely see the difference in uh, this version and this version. Uh, this, I think it's what the color should look like if we go back to um, the painting we were looking at before. Definitely, it seems like this one is the kind of palette that he was using. Uh, there is also another painting uh, reference here that is uh, Riders Crossing the Desert uh, from uh, 1870. So you can definitely see that they are in there. He did this painting uh, and then uh, came to this one. I, I think this one was uh, 1886 as well. We can definitely see that in here. So we have uh, 1867. So it was a pre previously uh, previous uh, to to that the other one. Interesting to see how he comes back to some of the topics that he is exploring. Probably he came to this and, oh, I think this is such an interesting subject. I want to make a painting uh, just of this one. So it's interesting to see. And I know I'm diving uh, a lot into Jerome here. We're going to back, go back to the trailer. But just two more examples. I love this painting of uh, Napoleon as well. You can see a lot of the reference from the clothing. I know that Probably Jerome is also uh, referencing from uh, museums and uh, 
the the Louvre uh, in a lot of the references that he has in hand to to put this together. But the movie is doing that the same. Uh, you have a lot of the clothing from from that era, and uh, he he is. Uh, a great painter, a great drawer, but he's also a great sculptor. So he's a, this is from Jerome as well, um, Napoleon once again. So let's get back to the trailer. Skin for greatness. But those in power only see me as a I love the bird eye shots as we saw from. I suggest you take the throne. Assassin's King. Creed. Holding on. Shall we vote? This is where I want to stop again. Uh, this is a great reference as well, but this time from uh, Jacques-Louis Davy. So if we go here, we can see the coronation of uh, Napoleon. It's a painting from that era, commissioned uh, in 1807. So uh, it's right when this was happening. I don't know if there's going to be any direct reference to the painting uh, in a shot, I would love to see that, or even a direct reference to uh, Jacques-Louis Davy uh, on this. But we can definitely see the detail of uh, Napoleon here in a lot of the references that uh, we see in there. The, even the, the clothing uh, gets a lot of direct reference, probably because both of them uh, were getting the reference from Jacques Louis Davy was getting the reference from the real thing, uh, but Ridley Scott, both from Jacques Louis Davy as well as what we have in museums uh, of that of this era. We also have a, a sketch from uh, Davy of Napoleon putting the crown on himself uh, and not the Pope. Uh, so it's interesting to see the relationship of power uh, here as well. Uh, and I would love to see the reaction from historians because I have a lot to learn uh, from this. So a little bit of a difference here, not a direct reference, but definitely a, a very interesting uh, discussion. I I'll add the link to the description so you can, there are lots of details of all the people uh, in this painting. Uh, it it's worth a video on its own. So if you have seen some video discussing this uh, painting, uh, please share in the comments so we can Definitely take a look at that, but a lot of information here on uh, Wikipedia and, and the, the detail. Once again, I love the direct reference and you can really zoom in because this is um, copyright free. So we have a very, uh, very close, uh, detailed version of the painting. So you can see all the brush strokes and, and so on. The, the detailing of metal, we've seen that in my videos about uh, rendering and materials. So it's interesting to see how he is detailing the metal uh, here and how it relates to the final movie as well. This vermin has held the world hostage with his egotism and his lack of simple good. Also, we can already see a lot of the language used in Gladiator and our other historical movies. A lot of them uh, tend to uh, get reference from Lawrence Amathadema, uh, and we'll definitely look at that in the end of the video. Manners. You think you're great? You are just a tiny little brute that is nothing without me. All Europe is uniting forces against me. What's the outcome of this if you don't succeed? Your Majesty. Great shots, right? Uh, <clears throat> I love this shot over here. Great study uh, subject as well. Uh, so you can get a little of the feel of the atmospheric perspective. Uh, almost is already a painting. As a lot of the shots are already paintings. We can see this one, all right, so this one. This is a great painting, a great control of values, uh, as well as the colors and this big wash. So we've discussed this on, on my videos on color, uh, especially the relationship of gamut uh, in my latest one, 
uh, uh, using James Gurney's uh, discussion. So this is supposed to be uh, skin tone. Uh, it we would suppose it's closer to warmer uh, colors, but it tends to have a very desaturated wash because of the overall blue on the post production here. So. This is a great segue into another topic that I, I want to discuss, and it's uh, really Scott's use over time of these references. I mentioned Lawrence uh, Amathadema, and I want to bring uh, Exodus, uh, another great reference that a lot of di direct reference came from uh, Amathadema. Amathadema had a lot of paintings of Egypt. If we go back here, we see the overall construction of the room and all the details. A lot of that comes from uh, his understanding and his uh, appreciation for Amathadema work. This is the death of the firstborn. Uh, it's currently at the Haidt Museum. So for those uh, in Amsterdam or traveling there, definitely worth uh, taking a look. So this is very, very interesting. There is a book from uh, Amathadema. I'll, I'll add the link to the description. I want to come back to this in another video uh, sometime. But definitely this book talks a lot about the influence from Amathadema. In, this is a, a catalog from an ex, uh, expo. But it talks a lot about Amathadema's influence in early movies, historical movies. Uh, so it's really interesting to see how it later on got to influence Gladiator and, and so on. So Ridley Scott definitely looks at this uh, a lot. Uh, I just want to mention before uh, we move ahead, there is also this painting uh, by Louis Leopold uh, Borley. Uh, at least that's I, I, how I think it's pronounced. So there is the presentation of Jacques-Louis David's coronation. I forgot to mention that. So just before we finish the, the it, it loaded. I don't know if you've been to the Louvre and you've seen this in person. It's a very, very big painting. So that's another detail that I just want to uh, point out. And it's interesting to see a depiction of that picture in another painting. So a painting within a painting, very hard. He, he needs to tackle both themes uh, all together. So I would love to see in the movie uh, this painting as well presented. It would be really interesting uh, to see uh, as well as the, the first one was presented during, um, and, and we can see it here, it was presented in the, the salon uh, as well. So yeah, going back and just to, to finalize uh, here, if you do any studies, uh, please share that as well. Uh, another great reference for uh, studies over here. So yeah, this, the horses, it reminds me a lot of Craig Mullins. So yeah. I geek out about this stuff, so sorry for going back and forth. I simply never do. Interesting to see that the blood was very warm colors in there, right? So yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching the movie. Uh, I hope you learned something from uh, this as well. If you did, please share in the comments so we can start a conversation. The whole community learn uh, something as well. So that's it from me. I hope you have a great day uh, and do some studies from this. A lot of composition references, a lot of color and light references, as well as this usage of the washes from blue and yellow. Uh, great to learn and use on your illustration um, down the line. So yeah, once again, have a great one and take care. See you in another video.